Hello there and welcome back to the colony with Man of the Ants. Today is a super exciting day. Today, today, finally, we have the Valve Index literally in my hands. Look at that, literally in my hands. So this is super, super exciting. Slightly let down in that I took the day off work so I could play around with it and it got delivered at 20 past 5 this evening. So mildly frustrating there. You may also be able to see, as I have for the first time ever, a little bit of a camera so you can see what's going on. That's specifically so you can see what's going on with the finger tracking as well, which we'll get into in a second. But I have forgot to put the lanyards on. So you probably see just dangling underneath the controllers there. I didn't put those on my wrist. So, you know, safety first, people. Safety first. So, yes. Yeah, so initial first impressions. I've literally been in this for about two minutes. Uh, I literally just got it set up, got it on my head, um, and just made sure that everything was working essentially, and that's about it. So first impressions are really, really good. This headset feels super high quality. I'm not a huge fan of the look of it. I don't like this big shiny faceplate thing on the front, but that's more of a personal taste, but the feel of it is amazing. I did see someone who uh, got their headset yesterday, I think it was, saying that they thought that the controllers felt like a bit of like a beta technology compared to the headset and I completely disagree with that. I think the controllers feel just as good as the headset. They feel really nice. I do wish the stick and the thumb track, the thumb pad in the middle were slightly differently orientated. If I bring it up towards the camera and show you the face of it there, which you can just about see. So yeah, the thumb pad is in the middle, it's like a tracking pad, and the thumb sticks on the far right there, or the far left on your left hand. I find that a little bit awkward. I find it, the, the thumb stick I think could be placed in the middle, I think it'd make it a bit easier to use. I think they've kind of defaulted to trying to use the, the tracking pad as something to use because that's what the Vive used, and that's what Valve obviously pushed with their Steam controller as well. But I, I think that's a little bit awkward, but I'm sure we'll get used to that as time goes on. So the trigger has a similar sort of, not quite as, as, as intense, but similar haptic feedback to a thing, what the Steam controller had, and definitely what the Xbox One controllers have, where you can kind of get a little bit of resistance as you push down on it. It does also have a final click. So you pull the trigger down, the last little bit, I don't know if you can hear it, there's a final click there, which I really like. That's a really nice piece of tactile feedback. That's awesome. Headset-wise, headset feels amazing. I don't know what they've used for the, the face interface uh, like pad, like the pad that actually sits on your face, but it feels amazing. It feels really, really nice. Much higher quality than the standard Oculus foam, much higher quality feeling than the VR cover that I ended up using on my Oculus Rift. That felt really nice compared to the standard Oculus. This feels amazing. It feels so good. Visuals, let's get on to visuals, shall we? There is obviously a notable improvement in terms of resolution. I would say I can still see a little bit of SDE, which is the screen door effect, which you can kind of just distinguish where there are lines of pixels. It's very, very minimal compared to what it was in the Oculus. It's a lot harder to see. And also, this is running at 120 hertz. The headset does support 144 hertz. I've got it running at 120 purely because that's what it suggested. When I set this headset up, when I updated it, updated the firmware on the headset and the controllers, uh, it came up a little box and said, your headset is currently set to run at 90. Would you like to run at 120? And I said, yes. And I left it at that. It didn't prompt me for 144, and I don't want to do anything outside of the realms of possibility at the moment. So we've left it at that. The only other thing I do think the Oculus do a little bit better is the actual IPD adjustment, which is a little slider that sits underneath the headset here. In Oculus, there is an option, if we go into the system here, to show you what the Steam one looks like, which you can see, yes you can. So in Oculus, there's an option which says like setup eyes or something like that, camera like, or eye calibration, lens calibration, something like that. And it gives you a very nice clear, Two crosses made of three green lines horizontally and vertically, and it gives you a very nice, easy way of calibrating your IPD. Now, I knew my IPD, so it wasn't all that difficult to get it right, but for anyone who doesn't know their IPD, they might find themselves a little bit off, so it's probably worth getting some sort of... There's probably an IPD calibration software you can get, hopefully, so that'll sort that out. I've no idea what the microphone sounds like yet, because obviously I haven't heard it. I am recording it. I don't know what it sounds like. The headphones, by default, it comes at full volume, and it sounds like it's at full volume. It was very loud. And they don't, the headset, the headphones, if you don't know, and I don't know if you can see, but they actually hover over your ears. So they don't, not like the Oculus ones, where they actually like a standard pair of headphones, they press on your ears. These are on the headband, but they are hovering maybe about an inch off of my ear. But 
We'll see how that goes. So far, it sounds very nice. I'm sure you can hear the little birds tweeting in the background there. So, the big thing with the valve controllers, the index controllers, I should say, not the knuckles controllers, the index controllers. As you can see, I've got my hands wide open and the controllers are not going anywhere. This band, which sits on my hand just behind this plastic tracking ring, uh, is tightened using these uh, elasticated lanyard straps. So they do not come off your hand. They are, I mean, they look a bit weird if you do that in game, don't do that, but they are quite firmly attached to you. And the reason for that is there's no grip button. There's no button on the inside of the um, grip to simulate picking something up like there is on the Oculus, like there is on the Vive Ones. There is the normal face buttons, there are two face buttons, there is the thumbstick, there is the trigger, there is no grip button. And that's because it uses these capacitive sensors. So you can see just by touching the handles of the controller, it knows you're doing that. And not only that, it does finger tracking. So we'll see how this, ah, see. The right hand picked up that I've got my left finger, uh, my middle finger down, the left hand picked up that I got two fingers down. There's a little bit of calibration that needs to go on in terms of getting used to you. Like I say, I've only used this very briefly. So it hasn't quite, hasn't quite got me calibrated properly yet. Look. But as you use it more, the better it will get at that. It was working just now. And it does seem like my right hand is actually doing really well now, but you see my left hand's still a little bit janky. But that's the sort of thing that will wind, that will ease itself out over time as it gets used to you and, and your hands and how you move your hands. But as you can see, the actual... Everyone does that first, of course. So yes, it does track all of your fingers individually, which is a huge, huge step, and it'll be a lot better once they are fully calibrated. You can see there, my little, my little finger is down, but it's detected that my ring finger is slightly curled which is not and it's now realized so yes so that is the valve controllers so the first thing we're going to do so we're going to go in here and i've got ready to launch the aperture hand lab demo demo so this was made by or oh, the developers oh, i can't remember their name i want to say treyarch because i'm reading a lot about treyarch it's not treyarch um it's the developers of the gallery which you'll have seen on my channel if you've been around for a while and they made this demo in in uh, association with valve to show off the index controllers. So this is what we're gonna run through first of all. Oh, I should say the eye relief and stuff, the actual way the headset fits on. So rather than using the kind of IBM halo that the Oculus Rift S now uses, or just using Velcro straps like the original Rift uses, I'm not sure what the Vive uses, I think it was Velcro straps as well. The index, on the back of my head here, there is a... a Welcome, Ooh. robot test subject. The sound After is brilliant. For the of that is brilliant. The now, the front is unfortunately behind me, so I'll see if I can turn around in a minute to centralize that a bit more, because otherwise, that's a bit weird for the camera side of things. Anyone is doing anything. For the purpose of this classified exercise, your barbed meat stripping claws have been replaced with hands. Please raise your hands up to your neck mounted weapons platform which for the purpose of this exercise has been replaced with a face <laughs> Good. Oh, there we go please exit the elevator so i can teleport but i cannot turn around elevator doors no apparently not so it's gonna be weird for the purposes of the camera because i might have my back to the camera for a little bit only available opening that you could possibly exit from this opening has been conveniently placed directly in front of you. Thank you very much. What I'm going to very quickly do is I'm just going to pop into the here and I'm just going to turn this volume down a little bit because it is quite loud. Quite loud. You'll notice I'm using my other hand to get to the system button here because I'm finding it a bit of a struggle to get to the buttons with the, with the hands. I might need to try adjusting the hand size perhaps, but yeah, I can get to the face buttons, I can get to the sticks. Oh, it's like a little wheel that you can spin on the trackpad that's cool but yes i'm struggling to get to the system button which is in a way a good thing because that means i won't be able to accidentally hit it which people did quite a lot so yes fit in the headset there's a dial on the back of the headset where is it here the dial adjusts the the fit of the headset on your face there's a velcro strap on top which is just supporting the headset and at the front of the headset just here there's another dial and this is the eye relief dial so this i don't know if i'm going to turn it with the controllers on particularly well Ah, there we go. You might be able to see, if I'm facing the right direction, you might be able to see that this is bringing the headset, the lenses, closer to my eyes. 
So this is how Valve got up with this fabled plus 20 up to plus 20 degrees FOV. And it does make a lot of difference. It does, like, I think... I'm not sure that the full distance is equal to the Oculus. But there's, there, you, there's a definite black border there. And as you bring it in, the image doesn't move. But you do get this immediate wonderful sensation of increased FOV. Which is awesome. I find that bringing it all the way in is a little bit too close. Two notches out it seems to be perfect for me. Uh, I can just feel it on the top of my face, but it's not pressing on me. So that's where I've left that. So, again, the, the, the clarity from these this this the, the screen is amazing. Like, bringing that up to my eyes, it's, hard, it's a very hard thing to get across on a video because obviously you can't really see what I see. You see a representation of what I see. But the... Uh, yeah, the clarity, the resolution is really, really nice on these hands. It looks so good when it's up close. And it was the sort of thing that would blur quite a lot as you get a bit closer sometimes, but it looks really nice. And that sign over there, I can't read the top word, but I can read hazard at the bottom quite easily. Caution, do not touch. I can read over there. It all looks really, really clear. It looks so nice. I'm so excited about having a new headset for the first time. Decapitation hazard. Assisted nonverbal machine human communication training. Please approach the training platform. Please approach the platform. You have not approached. No, I haven't. I'm sorry, mate. I'm sorry. Is in front of you. Good. Deploying first exercise. The other thing I will say is, if you're not aware, obviously I'm from the UK. If you're not aware, Europe is currently experiencing a huge heat wave. Frank, Hello. Human. I like you. So I am waving to you. To Hello. Wave exchange. Good. Yes. Now bonded in eternal friendship. Ah. Good. Deploying next exercise. Awesome. Okay. Hey, I'm Alan. And here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna shake my fist, this fist, at you. And there's not a thing you're gonna do about it. Shake, 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 shake. I gotta say, even even with the slightly janky finger tracking as it is at the moment, which again it will get a lot better as I use the controllers a bit more. Um, it's just so nice just having that, just in your in the peripheral, just having that that immersion going on. Did I? Is there a way of turning myself around? Because that is a little frustrating for you guys, isn't it? Uh, if I hit that, will that do anything? I don't think it is, is it? Double shake, double shake, double shake, double shake. My father could shake. Good. Deploying next. Activity. So what I might do then, as we've shown off the controllers and everything they do now, and if we can just, uh, ooh, there we go. So yes, what I might do is I might just turn the camera off, because it's weird just looking at the back of me over there. So let's do that, and I will continue wittering on in the background without you. It'd be able to see me. You can't see my room boundary there. I thought I'd turn that off. And it's also... Oh, no, it is pretty accurate, I suppose. So, what I was saying is, if you don't know, Europe is experiencing a heat wave at the moment, so which means the UK is not experiencing a heat wave, but it is quite warm. So I am super sweaty. I've got to say, if I put the Oculus on, feeling like I'm feeling now, temperature-wise, it would be immediately fogging up. And there seems to be, like, a tiny fraction, maybe. But that's it. There is nothing else happening. I don't know that's whether because they maybe put some sort of coating on from the factory and it will diminish over time, perhaps. But for now, it feels really good to not have to worry about seeing being super sweaty. I'm not sure why it's facing away from everything. As part... As before, and thrust it into my flattened head, but this time, higher. Higher. As part of the setup for Steam VR, you have to point at your monitor so it knows where your monitor is. So I did that. I pointed at my monitor with the controller and pressed the trigger. And it's like, cool, that's where your monitor is. And then it points me literally in the opposite direction from my monitor to be forward, which is a bit odd. And maybe that's like a safety thing, so you're not really doing this in front of your computer, but it makes it a bit weird in terms of recording stuff. Chill out, mate, alright? I got it. Third in our four series high five panel. Down low. Third in our four series high five panel. Down low. How cool is that? Down well, the right hand seems to have sorted itself out a little bit. Left hand. Down low. Left hand's doing pretty good. Look at that. That's awesome. <gasps> 
No, you. Ooh. Oh, they got like a little. On three. Oh, I just noticed. One, two, three. Rock smashes your puny hand scissors. Sad. Win. Let's go again. Best two out of three. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Come on now. I won. <laughs> Master of deception. Good. Yes, so these, these these blue bars here, they are like four sensors. The harder I grip, the harder I grip, the more the bars show. That's super, super cool. you got to see these hands. And I said, Ted, you're lying and you're fired. But then I thought, if Ted was willing to get fired over these hands, maybe I better check them out for myself. Maybe you had, Ted. Let's see him, Hotshot. Hold him up. Oh, and that's... One on the front as well. Or impressive. Gotta shake that hand. Put her there. New vice president in charge of hands. That's right. You are oh, that's right. that's nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 I am. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Good shake. Good shake. Yes. 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 Business and Shake. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Let's stop that then. That right there, that was great. If I ask you to gently caress my hand. How about this time you give me a real handshake? Mate, you kidding. You kidding me. Handshake. Really squeeze it. I can take it. I'm going to be Hello. Hello, friend. All I ever wanted was your friendship. But instead, you threw me away into a bottomless pit. And at the bottom of that pit, among these discarded robots, I found something even better than your friendship. This gun. Mm. Now you have no choice but to be my friend. And as your friend, I want to ask Hand freaked out briefly there. Friendly favor. How many bullets has it got? Six? Or I will shoot you. Do you think Frank is bluffing? Jesus, Frank. Chill out. Do not make me demonstrate again. Because now Frank has some sense of how this gun works. And the next time, I will not accidentally miss you. Now, pull open the drawer to your right and remove the envelope inside. Good. Now put. Now tear the envelope open. Oh, the pinch mechanics. You cannot reveal the envelope's contents until you have torn it open. This is oh, that was not quite as work. good as I was expecting. Oh, he's up there and he wanted me to go down the bottom. If you have inside the envelope is a very, very, almost absurd good. Now free me, or so help me, I will... I... Oh, who is friendly Frank kidding? No more guns. I am asking you, as a friend, please, free me. Friendly Frank. CHG? Your What's friend. CHG? Place the key in the hole labeled Core Escape to complete Core Escape sequence. Or place the key in the hole labeled Destroy Core to uh -huh. destroy the core. Uh -huh. Friendly Frank was unaware that core destruction was an option and is beginning to regret holding you at gunpoint. Yes. Also throwing away my gun. You should. You should regret both of those things. Frank. Place the key gun. In the hole. Pew, pew, pew. So obviously we're going to destroy him, right? Because we could do a bit of the thumbs up, Frank. All's good. All's good. All's good. Oh, it's the thumbs down, Frank. Oh. Um. 
purpose of this triple blind test. Oh, good. Discovering the value of friendship. You have got to be kidding me. Hmm. <laughs> that is not even science. And by choosing to save yourself instead of your friend, you have faith. Uh, hmm. Tough but fair. Test concluded. That is not fair from my perspective. Placing all robot participants in sleep mode. Ha! See ya, Frank. No, wait, I'm a robot. Save me, Frank. Damn. Hey, Frank? Yes. Hello? Yes. So, are you in sleep mode? Friendly Frank is not. How long do robots live? I suspect it might be a very long time. Hmm. I think this is going to be a real test of our friendship. We'll just stay here for a while, shall we? So the reason I'm doing this with my head, which you might be able to tell, is it looks a little bit weird. Um, that was obviously quite a dark scene, so I wanted to see what the god rays looked like. So that was quite a bright colour on a dark scene. There's a little bit of god ray going on, and obviously it's not perfectly representative because it's not white on black, but there was a little bit there, but it was not as, obtr as obtrusive as I found the Oculus God Rays to be, so that's really, really good. There was obviously a lot of black there, and the black did look a little bit grey. That is just because I am used to the Oculus with its OLED screens where they are a lot blacker, but that being said, my Oculus panels are mismatched. My right eye in the Oculus is very black, the left eye is kind of grey and washed out when very dark scenes, so dark scenes have always looked a little odd to me because I have that sort of mismatch of colour with between my eyes. So although that was a little grey rather than black, it still looked really nice and it's definitely the sort of thing that after you've seen a few black scenes you're not going to think about it. you don't look at it and think oh it's bright in here you just look at it as coming from the oculus thinking oh the oculus was a little bit darker here so that's the sort of thing that will definitely just get you'll get used to a bit over time it's not a massive massive difference so there we go then that is my first impressions of the valve index and wow i am so so happy with this the only other thing I saw, which I sort of thought I'd mention, is that obviously you do have a black border around your vision, what you can see. My right, my left arm is trying, a little, little bit of tracking issue seems to be going on, but it shouldn't be, so we'll see if that sorts itself out over time as well. Um, you do have a black border around you, and in the Oculus this was a very circular black border. What I'm noticing here is that if I'm looking straight forward, the border on the outside is a little bit, rather than being rather than being this sort of shape, is like the opposite. Con I don't concave and convex. That's convex, right? So rather than being a concave shape on the side, I keep hitting my headset with my controller, I'm so sorry. Um, it is a bit convex. There's a little bit of black. If I look towards the edges, the edges are concaved. They, they circle around my vision. But if I look straight forward, there's a little bit of black, or a little bit of not black, but just grayness or something, like just creeping in there. I don't ask cause if, that's, if that's because the... Screens are slightly further apart in the index, so the crossover in the middle isn't quite there as much. So I don't know what, what that's about, but yeah, it might just be the, the weird way I'm sort of perceiving things myself. So there we go. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into a few other games, just check those out in terms of clarity. Um, I don't really use Steam Home very much, so it's it looks very nice, but it's hard to say how it compares directly to the Oculus. Whereas if I go and use something that I play a fair bit of so if i play some like project cars which i played quite recently or i'll do some trover uh, jump into a few things that i've played a bit of so we can see how they look in there and really get a feel for this increased resolution so after this or in between here and what i'm about to say there might be a couple of other little tidbits coming up if there's not then i don't have much else to say i guess it just looks really good as i say there's a little bit of screen door you can just about see Particularly if you sort of get a straight line at, at the at good angle, so like trees are a good example of that. You can just about see where the, the kind of the pixels align themselves, but significantly, significantly better than where the, the OG Oculus was. When I keep saying Oculus, I mean the Rift, obviously, and I do mean the original CV1 Rift, not the Rift S. I haven't used the Rift S, so I'm not comparing it to the Rift S. I'm saying compared to the original Rift, which I've had for like three years now, so... Really happy to have a final new headset upgrade. So the tracking ring finger's a little off. Oh, hello. 
but it does seem to have got a bit better as we've gone on, doesn't it? So it is it's definitely there's definitely a bit of a learning learning curve. Even the index I didn't notice this. Even the index finger, I thought the index finger would only be sensed when you press the trigger. But no, it senses it as it goes down as well. There must be sensors all the way up to the side of the trigger. That's awesome. That's awesome. So a quick look at blade and sorcery then. That's weird because again, the grip, the grip is just holding. So yeah, so again, first impressions, it looks really nice. The increased vertical FOV is what I'm really, really noticing. Obviously the verticality doesn't matter in this game, but it is there and it's just having that... That increased verticality does make a huge amount of difference, actually. It's surprising how much difference it makes. It looks really, really good. So this has confirmed to me that v SteamVR does want you facing away from your PC. My PC is behind me. This is what it classes as forward within the game. So I am going to try and change that. I think for a, a general player, I think that's absolutely the best thing. That's definitely the way to go. I think for uh, someone who does a bit of recording, a YouTuber, a Let's Player, a Twitch streamer, whatever, you want to be facing towards your PC. You want to be able to look through my nose gap and see my screen, which I can't currently do. So I'll have to look into that see if I can change that. So the reason I'm in Blade and Sorcery is Blade and Sorcery does support the finger tracker, which you can see here. That's me putting down my middle and small little fingers and trying to get it to detect that my ring finger isn't there, which isn't quite doing. But then again, it does sort of... My little finger does go in a weird direction when I do that, so that sort of explains that, I guess. So anyway, let's grab something. Is that new? I can't tell if this is new. Obviously, it's been updated for the index tracking, and I can't tell if it's new. This is definitely new, isn't it? Or if they just look better because of the screen. This, 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 like, gilding stuff looks amazing. It looks so clear. That etching looks absolutely class. Do you know what? That feels supernatural, actually. That feels really good. Just being able to just grab it like that. I like the fact that my one hand can barely hold it and it just drags it along behind it. That's quite cool. Let's, uh, let's pop that down there. What is actually in this? Oh, that's really cool. That's a really... I suppose they just had too many weapons coming into the game. And they had to update it a bit. Do we have a spear there? We do have a spear there. I do like the spear, don't I? Right, let's take our, uh, our maul and try it out on something. Ah, see, I've let go there, but it thinks I'm still holding it. That's a bit better. Uh, let's go for a medium, a medium two. Oh, is there anything with that on Archer? Yeah, we'll go for a, go for that one. Because Archers are a pain in the behind. Yeah, that feels so nice. Oh, that's nice. There we go. It's obviously a bit slow, and I'm trying to move it a bit too fast. Oh, there we go, mate. There we go. Oh, you cheeky. Oh, that's amazing. No. Oh. He's still alive, isn't he? Not anymore. I mean, I'm a big fan of this weapon. So, smoothness wise, it's a little, there's a little bit of kind of jerkiness when I do the rotation. 
But bearing in mind this is running at 120 frames a second now, or 120 hertz in the headset, it looks super smooth. And again, it's going to be something that's very hard to get across in the video, how much difference it's making. Because, uh, The video is recorded at 60 FPS, so you can't really see 120, but it feels super, super smooth. I'm a big fan of this weapon. A big fan of this weapon. So there we go then, that is Blade and Sorcery in the Valve Index. Oh, I was trying to catch it and throw it and catch it. Let's try that again. Where's my... there it is. How do I bring it towards me? I've forgotten. Oh, there we go, I got it. So. Oh, no, that's not going to work. Oh, oh, almost. Yes. Oh, I never held it backwards before. Didn't know you could. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. It's amazing how much difference not having to use a button and just grabbing it. And for things like this, for weapons which have got this very similar sort of looking haft grip to the actual controllers, it feels supernatural. Not supernatural as in ghouls and aliens and, and ghosts. Supernatural as in super natural. Two separate words to use. And here we are in Project Cars then. This dial, I'm trying to point with my hands because I'm so used to that. This dial, uh, this floating dial in front of me, that looks so amazingly super clear. That's ridiculous. The sound is amazing, it's absolutely just filling my ears with sound, despite the fact that the headphones are way off my ears. I've picked probably a bit of a powerful car to have a bit of a play around in. Warning for unsafe crossing of pits, pit exit lines, that looks super clear. So I can very, oh, I'm not looking at any of the racetrack, I'm actually just trying to look at the car. So the rev counter in front of me, super, super clear numbers. The 1,000 times RPM is a little bit more difficult to make out with from back here, but it's the numbers themselves are very clear. I shall have to try jumping into a car which actually has a speedometer so I can see that. But everything else looks amazing. Like that little bit again, that extra FOV, not, just the, I mean, not particularly the verticality in project cars, but the horizontal extra FOV is really nice. It's like... The, the mirrors, just not having to look as far to get to the mirrors, not having to like really focus on them. Yeah, it looks really nice and it feels super smooth. Those extra 30 hertz, those extra 30 frames a second that is kicking out feel really, really nice. It doesn't feel faster, but it feels very smooth. Awesome. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try and see if I can get this up to 144 hertz and see how, see if that feels any different. So I'll be right back. So I've upped the F, uh, the HS, the hertz, that's what I'm going for. I've upped the hertz to 144 and at first there's no immediate noticeable difference, but I've turned on, oops, I just pulled, pulled the uh, eye relief right the way out. I do hope that doesn't break that easy because it seems to be quite easy to hit it accidentally. I hope it's quite sturdy to suffer those things quite well. I'll try to get it back to where it was. There we go. So yeah, so I, I've turned on one of the controllers very briefly. And you know I was doing this before and the controller was freaking out a bit? It looks so much smoother at 144 hertz. It's amazing how much difference it makes. Just that extra 20 FPS again. It looks super, super smooth. Yeah, awesome. Alright then. So we are back in Project Cars, we've got a speedometer in this car, and obviously it's very hard again for you to see, but they both are very clear. There's a little bit of fuzziness to them, which goes away as I get a bit closer, but it's very, very readable, which is absolutely the main thing. 
it looks super clear. One of the things I actually sort of uh, didn't notice the first time I loaded the game up, but the second time I loaded it up, the menus which pop up, which just go through the various manufacturers and partners and all that that the game has, those were very, very crisp. Which I don't, rem I don't remember noticing that before in the Oculus. Maybe I wasn't looking particularly, but they looked very crisp compared to before. Uh, like, just the glove textures look awesome. Yeah, it looks really good. And I've gone with the slower car, not necessarily on purpose, but just to try and get the, the speedometer there. So maybe that the 144 hertz isn't as noticeable, but again, it feels super, super smooth. Really, really nice. Just these fast head movements, there's none of that jarriness. You don't get any kind of, almost like you would get screen tearing on a monitor if you are running a, a an FPS, which is very different to your monitor's refresh rate. You get screen tearing. Similar to that, if you move your head very fast in the OG Rift, you get not screen tearing necessarily, but you get this kind of like this jutter, this kind of line where the headset tries to catch up with where your head is. And there is none of that here. There is none of that. It is so smooth. I wasn't sure if I was going to run at 144 hertz. Wasn't too sure if my PC would like it. Wasn't too sure if it'd be worth it. But I'm definitely going to give it a go as using it as my default resolution because it is really, really nice. Really, really nice. I don't know what those cones are for, I'm sure they weren't important. One of the other things I noticed is because Project Cars is a seated game, obviously compared to the uh, room scale of the previous experiences, it does uh, it does face forward for that. So it does seem that f uh, seated games will default to facing forward, whereas the room scale games will default to facing backwards, I'm guessing. Which is something, I'm, like I said, I'm going to have to try and look into that. It's not going to be so much of a problem for games which do have some sort of centering option or like re recalibration like project cars pressing the button on the controller you can recenter yourself so you can make sure you are perfectly in line so if your seat shifts around you can do that um yeah i i'm honestly so impressed with this this i was gonna say this game this game yes i'm impressed with this game i'm more impressed with this headset it is super super nice i've managed to pull the faceplate off a couple of times by accident when i was taking it off but the faceplate is entirely magnetically locked in so that's not a problem at all i did uh i think i showed it in it's in the in the little bit just now i did accidentally when i was moving the headset pull the eye relief all the way out by just grabbing the front of the headset and yank yeah, headset and yanking it forward that's a bit concerning because my dev kit 2 uh rift that mechanism basically broke by the time I got to the CV1 because I did that a few times by accident and it's just a bit too easy to do. When you're trying to reset the headset on your face, when you're trying to take it off, put it on, when you're fiddling around, it's a little bit too easy to do that. So I'm hoping that mechanism is quite robust and is expected to be yanked around a lot and isn't going to end up... As something that I'm going to have to get used to as, as a Index user, taking off by holding the faceplate interface rather than the front of the headset and putting it on in the same sort of way. That's something for me to try and get used to because obviously there is a lot of user error involved with all things. Not just VR, but with all things. There's a sort of a flashing white square. I don't know if you can see it. It's moving. It's not the size of a pixel. It's about... I don't know, maybe like 10 by 10 pixels or something like that. It wasn't a perfect white, maybe it's just the way the, the uh, sky was being rendered or something. It was a little bit odd, not done if you managed to pick up on that. So yes, anyway, let's get back to it. As a piece of kit, this is just insanely good, insanely good. I think I'm going to have to get used to the grip mechanics, particularly in any Oculus style games, which I'm going to try to play in Revive if uh, there's any exclusives that come out. That'll be very interesting to see how that emulates itself and i've heard that going from a a game that on steam vr which is expecting to see the vive controllers compared to the uh the index controllers i've heard that some of that can be a little bit janky to start with so we'll see how that goes but i'm sure that'll be sorted out as and when devs update their games just so they can uh, expect you to have thumbsticks pretty much seems to be the problem a lot of the games expect you to have the trackpad rather than the thumbsticks so that'll be the main difference there so awesome Awesome, awesome stuff. I'm so excited to start playing some VR games in this. I really, really am. Going to leave that there for now. Then, as I said, there may have been some other things cut in the middle there. There may not be. Who knows? If you've enjoyed this video, please do click the like button. It's massively appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I see them. 
Don't forget, I do stream every Wednesday at 6pm. Be wonderful to see you there. Otherwise, I will see you next time in some other magical VR adventure in our fancy new Valve Index with our fancy new Index controllers with our fancy new screens and the increased FOV. One thing I will say is that I've seen a few people moaning that the FOV increase isn't as magnificent as they were expecting. I don't know what people were really expecting. It's the same, pretty much the same lens, it's just slightly closer to your face. So there is a definite increase, but there are still a, there is still a black boundary. I will say that at the top, there isn't really a black boundary. At the bottom, there just about is because of the nose gap. There's only really blackness on the sides for me. So in terms of the vertical um, FOV, the vertical FOV seems to be quite massively increased compared to where the Oculus was. Because I can pretty much look all the way up, and all I can actually see is a bit of my eyebrow. I can't see the top of the lenses at all. So, yeah, really excited to see some amazing looking games in this. I'll hopefully see you in some magical VR adventure very, very soon. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining me.